Hello everybody, how are we doing today? Hope you're all okay. Just watched Game of Thrones episode 9, A Dances with Dragons. Uh, not good as hard home. The Battle of the Zombies was fantastic and uh, still still got a battle and a couple of killings, but not good as hard home. First to start off with just the small stuff. We're in Dawn and uh, Jamie Lannister is... Uh, given a pardon by Prince Doran but with conditions he can be free he has to go, go back to Westeros King's Landing with his niece Marcella and uh, also take Prince uh, Christian with him so he can put him on the small council obviously he agrees to this but he doesn't know what the situation is what the situation is in uh, King's Landing that the Faith have taken over Bronn is freed but punched in the face as a punishment for punching the prince in the face. That's it. That's that one finished. Number two, Arya. Arya Stark is in Bat Brothers. She's about to kill the thin man, but she sees an old enemy uh, with the Tyrells, and then she doesn't kill the thin man. She follows him around. Arya's enemy is, of course, Meryn Trant, the Lannister bodyguard that killed her father. So she follows him to a brothel and watches what he does. Obviously she's planning something. If she does it or not, doesn't nobody knows. But she wants to kill him. He's on the top of her list and she wants to hurt him. The man with no face asks her, why didn't you kill the thin man? And she goes, lies. Just says he didn't want to eat no oysters today. I think he knows. You can tell by his face, but he's giving her a chance. He's seen how this plays out. So we shall see in the next episode, all the two boring bits. Number three, the Battle of the Zombies now. It's finished and they've made their way back to the wall. Jon Snow, the Free Folk, the Thane, the Giant, everybody, they come back to the wall, they want to go in. Jon Snow comes forward and he looks at Sir Alistair. Now obviously Sir Alistair, don't, Alistair doesn't want to let him in, so he's thinking about it. And at five minutes, ten minutes later, he opens the bridge. But Salister, whatever he may be, is a man of honor. He knows the rules, he knows the law, he's not the command. Jon Snow is Lord Commander. So he lets him in, but he does say to Jon Snow afterwards, You have a good heart, but that heart will get you killed and all of us killed. He still doesn't trust the free folk. While there, Jon Snow looks at all his men, 80% of them probably giving him dirty looks. They're thinking, What the fuck's happening here? And they want to like kill them. But obviously they hold him back. Hopefully the story of Jon Snow that is will not happen and he will survive. He is the only one that can get the White Watcher, White, White Walkers. Okay, now the two main stories. There's two main stories. Number one, the story of Stannis. Stannis' camp has been attacked in the night by Ramsay Snow or Ramsay Bolton and uh, he's destroyed half the camp food, horses, whatever, everything. So Stannis knows he must sacrifice his daughter to gain the advantage against the Boltons. And he's decided the white, the red woman has persuaded him and he's decided. Even his wife is with him. So to do this, so Stannis to perform his plan must make way and get rid of Davos first. So Sir Davos is sent to Castle Black for reinforcements, food, armory, men, whatever. But Davos obviously knows something is up, but he cannot decline. He protests, but he cannot decline, so he goes. Before he goes, he gives uh, Princess Shireen a little gift, a gift of a, of a deer, a sigil for House Baratheon, and he goes, a gift is just a gift. There is no reason for it, that's it. But he knows in his back of his head, I know, he knows in the back of his head there's something wrong. And it's gonna it's gonna happen soon, but he can't stop it. But hopefully he does do something when he comes back. But I doubt he will. Because he's a man of honor. So come he's gone now, and the King Stannis comes and visits his daughter and uh, tells her that a king must do things without choice, that choice is already made. She wants to help him, she says. He kisses her and says, thank you and, and sorry. So afterwards we see her walking towards 
the pole in the middle, not realizing what is going to happen until she gets there. She calls for her father, but they don't listen. She gets tied up and she calls for her father. And they come out, her mom and her dad, Stannis, come out. And her mom changes her mind and tries to stop it, but she's up stopped by the guards. And uh, the Lady Melisandre burns, sacrifices Princess Shireen. Very sad moment for me. That is really, really bad. There's no need for that. Stannis could have got his way. The writer's done that. That's, Stannis, that's not Stannis' character. That is never Stannis' character. He's a man of honor. He'll only do things when he really has to. He he, he was supposed to be the best tactician military-wise in Westeros. So he would have found another way. The writer's just made that up for no reason. Bad situation. I still respect Stannis. And I still think his character can go a long way. But he has to start controlling the Red Lady. Okay. The last part. Marine, the fighting pits. The fighting pits start off. And uh, Daenerys Targaryen is there. And while the fighting is started, Jorah comes out in the pits and fights all these men and kills them all. Well, after killing them, he, get, he grabs a spear and he sees the sons of the harpy, one of them trying to kill Daenerys. He throws the, the spear at the guy and he kills him. And all chaos, chaos starts. A battle starts between the harpy and the unsullied and the rest of them. Now in this battle, we lose another character, Lorak. He is the future husband of Daenerys. He's part of one of the houses of Marine. We thought he was a bad guy. He was with them all this time, but obviously he's not. He's dead now. They kill him while trying to attack Daenerys. And then they they kill half the soldiers, half the Unsullied, and they grab them all in one little hole in the middle of the arena. While all looks lost, all will be dead, the dragon Drogon comes out and saves their lives. He breathes fire on a lot of the sons of the Harpy. And then she gets onto the dragon. She flies away. She is saved. So we know she's going to live. Two lives dead in this in this show now, in this uh, in today. Princess Shireen and Larak. So the big ones are on the tenth, tenth episode. We shall see what happens. Still not good as Hard Home, but still a good episode. Good battle scenes. Jorah is still alive. Jorah, Dario Naharis, and Tyrone all survive. Mia Sandre survives. In the end, all they watch is her flying off in the dragon while the harpy escape. So we shall see in the next episode how many people she kills, how many how many people of marine she burns. She's going to come back like the Mad King and kill them all. That's what she's going to do. All in all, good episode. But the death of Princess Shireen, uncalled for. No need for that at all. Uh, the Battle of Marine was all right. Not, uh, not the best battle, but it was all right. Nothing else unexpected. We shall find out on the third, on the last episode, how everybody's character plays out. It's going to be an attack on Winterfell. Sansa Stark might do something, might not do something. She might kill Ramsay. She might not. She might escape. Cersei is going to get her comeuppance. Jon Snow will find out if he lives or dies for another series, and Daenerys is going to burn everything. So everybody, thank you very much, and I shall see you next week. Keep watching. And subscribe to my channel, Mojo Ali. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.